Hi guys, today we're going to have a look at EMF, which stands for Electromotive Force, and we're also going to be looking at Internal Resistance. Now firstly, EMF, Electromotive Force, is nothing to do with forces. It's just kind of a historic name that kind of got left behind, really, it never really got changed, but it's nothing to do with forces. It's to do with voltages. Now batteries convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Generators turn kinetic energy into electrical energy and a battery does a job of work in pumping electrons around the circuit. Each of these devices, batteries or generators, they're both producing EMFs, voltages at the terminals. And a battery is said to produce an EMF, an electromotive force which is defined as the energy converted into electrical energy per unit charge. And it's got the same units as voltage. So this is important here, there's an energy change and that's a clue as to whether the voltage you're dealing with is an EMF or whether it's a potential difference. If it's an EMF, the device, the thing that you're using, is changing any kind of energy into electrical energy. So like a generator, it's going to change kinetic energy into electrical energy per unit charge. That's The per unit charge is important because that gives us uh, volt, uh, volts. It's not uh, energy, we're talking about volts. So we have to have that per unit charge in our definition. Whereas like something like a potential difference, like a, a, a resistor has got a potential difference across it if some electricity is flowing through it. But that electrical energy that's flowing through our circuit, through our resistor, well that energy has been probably turned into heat energy. So it's going from electrical energy to another kind of energy per unit charge. So that's not an EMF, that would be a potential difference. So just remember an EMF, you're looking at a device that's changing one kind of um, energy into electrical energy, that's the key. So internal resistance. All batteries and generators dissipate heat internally when giving out a current, and this is due to something called internal resistance. A perfect battery has no internal resistance, but unfortunately there's no such thing as a perfect battery. So how is EMF connected with internal resistance? Okay, well here on the right here you can see a very basic circuit. Now uh, you can see a cell, you can see something labeled internal resistance, and that's we can kind of imagine that there's an internal resistor inside our battery, inside our cell that we're looking at, uh, that otherwise the cell's a perfect uh, battery, sorry, a perfect cell, uh, and there's a small resistance inside there, and we're going to call that an internal resistance. And also, obviously you're going to connect your battery or your cell up to something in your circuit, and we're going to give that a, a big R for an external resistance. So the EMF, the voltage that's leaving our cell, okay? So the EMF that's leaving the cell has got to equal the voltage across big R plus the voltage across the small little internal resistance, the internal resistor we're kind of imagining that's inside our battery. So the EMF is going to equal I, so that's the current flowing through the circuit, times big R, so the, that's the voltage, so I times big R is the voltage across the external resistance, or the external resistor, and I little r is the voltage across the, the kind of internal resistor. And we can kind of imagine that this internal resistor, the more current that's flowing, it's stealing more and more voltage from our, uh, from our perfect uh, cell or our perfect battery. So we've got our EMF voltage, uh, that I big R, we can imagine it as something called the terminal voltage. If I measured the the uh, voltage across the terminals of the battery, uh, that would be the terminal voltage I big R. And then I little r is the internal voltage, the voltage that's kind of being stolen by this internal resistor. Now, if we draw more and more current from our battery, we'll actually find that the the uh, the terminal potential difference it's going to get less and less and less. 
and this is because what's happening is as we're getting more and more current that uh, that internal resistor is going to start taking more and more voltage and this is why for example if you're starting a car when you start a car you can see that the headlights dim and that's because your battery inside your car is not a perfect battery suddenly you're drawing a huge amount of current to get your engine to start and the lights will actually dim on the car and and the the reason why they're dimming is because the terminal potential difference or or the p terminal uh voltage across the battery is getting weaker and weaker and weaker so this is the circuit on the right hand pit, uh, the right hand side of your screen uh the circuit that you'd need to measure uh uh, the EMF of a, a, bat a battery or a cell. So you definitely need a, a voltmeter and that would be across the terminals. Uh, you're going to have an EMF from a cell. You've got your internal resistance there and then basically everything between those two red lines that would be inside your battery. Obviously there's not an external, sorry, or an internal resistor there. It's just because the chemicals inside the cell uh, kind of cause resistance themselves as the electrons are trying to move through the through the cell. Uh, you're going to need an ammeter and also you're going to need a variable resistor so you can change big R from the previous equation and as you do that you'll find that uh, as the current increases so as you decrease the 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 resistance on your variable resistor as you decrease the the resistance there and the current gets bigger and bigger the terminal voltage the terminal potential difference across your uh, your real cell or your real battery just gets weaker and weaker and weaker. The gradient is equal to minus the internal resistance. So this is something useful that you need to know. That on this graph here, if you need to find out what the internal resistance is, well it's the gradient of the potential difference on the uh, uh, the terminal potential difference against current. And when there is no current flowing the terminal potential difference is equal to the EMF of the cell. So if you're working backwards here, eventually if you just reduce the amount of current, so or basically you turn your device off, yeah, so there's, n I mean, if you disconnect the battery of your car uh, from the car so no current is flowing at all, and you get a voltmeter and you measure across the, you measure across the, uh, terminals of the battery that is going to equal the EMF of the cell but only as long as no current is flowing. Oh and finally uh, if you haven't already please consider subscribing. I'm starting to add a lot more videos nowadays. I've got a new microphone, new system of making these videos so hopefully this should be a little bit slicker. Okay bye for now.